Zumi's prayers, rebuked by reality. The sun staggers at midday. The moon totters from the throne of night. The blue heavens churn into foam by the plunging stars from down their crown. Before us, an infinite stretch of insensibility. Is it also of infinite heartlessness, our heart of more compassion than what you have here made? Are we seeing an infinite vacuity making us vacuous, making you a hollow irrelevance? What we saw there was of the earth, but a genesis, not a finis. The soul which was placed here was startled by unfamiliar tones, hearing faintly some far-off melody. Our imagination is rebuked by reality. There are sacred meanings hidden somewhere, somewhere. Is there a fullness of things or an emptiness suffused with illusions some men would have it so, thus to be free to do whatever their loose spirit allows, thus to come full stop at the granite of reality and have an infinite kindness sentencing them. The universe must be an infinite exaggeration to any single part of its own entirety. We are given to a religious view and reason and emotion to confront exaggeration to an impossibility. Seen correctly, all things are possible. Also, it is possible to mold illusions, goodness and evilness in ways which work for us all, all things good. The universe lives in shadow of an atar, clothed with clouds whose fragrance is of all flora there ever was. It is a bouquet redolent of worship. Though there is endless detail, our universe is a panorama expressive of the whole and the purpose of the whole. The beginning of beginnings yet possessed a memory and affects to which our heart responds as no mere detail can ever do, so that we do not mock the misfortunes of this apparent vacuity or laugh at its ruinous behavior. To those who believe the universe is other than this, it is our Father's house, it is a sanctuary. Your very life runs through it and makes it glad. It is not indeed yourself, but an expression of your wisdom and power. It is but your preliminary disclosure of the true reality later to be manifested to us in the heavens. If we are wise, we will even now walk on the wings of the wind as you do. You are glad in the pureness of our joy. You mourn in the bitterness of our grief. Then there comes to us a way in which true spiritual reality enters our life as first fruits of heaven, while we await the adoption of sons, which is the resurrection of our body, finding ourselves incapable to properly speak into your divine essence, the Holy Spirit enters the conversation. For our good and even for our glory, the one person of God speaks to another. In everything you work to conform us to the image of your Son, our frail human capabilities, seen as our current reality, are entered to your presence, to your listening ear. Through all our painful experiences, the Spirit is at work. When sin's power threatens us, the Spirit intercedes, causing us to fight against it. When sickness comes, the Spirit is there, giving us peace, patience, renewing our expectations, humbling us, enabling us to accept it from God. When despair comes over our weakness as your child, the Holy Spirit is there, praying that in everything God's will may be done. We had thought in the turmoil of our life that you were against us, you who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. 
Will you not give us all things with him? Though we have low confidence in ourselves to sustain some goodness and to communicate to you, we are taken out of our illusory life, riding the chariot of the Holy Spirit and ascended to where true reality lies, the inner space of your eternal being. Amen.